ran into the camera. Welcome back guys to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection. I am your host, Mike. I guess I'm a host. Uh, this was a talk show, maybe, but I'm talking to you guys. Whoever's watching this, uh, this is a Western Roundup update. That's right, guys. I got some new Westerns. Uh, one of my, my, probably my favorite genre of movies. I mean, nowadays, I mean, if I had to pick one right off the top of my head, it'd be Westerns, and I really enjoy watching them from all decades and stuff. And, you know, even new Westerns that are coming out, either be streaming Netflix or coming out at, say, Walmart for five bucks, just one of these cheaply made ones. There's all kinds of westerns nowadays, so you've got to kind of search through them. Uh, they're starting to become popular again, uh, which, you know, I know they're going to tear it up and they won't be that great. Uh, so I'll focus on westerns all the way from the 20s to the 90s and beyond. So anyways, guys, I got some new pickups. Uh, this first one was released from Cauldron Films. Really good um, label. I, th I thought they were around for a long time, but apparently they're a new label. Um, my my first pickup from them was uh, Contraband, uh, the Fulci movie that um, was the, the officially the last Euro crime movie, and um, picked up a movie called Convoy Busters with uh, uh, was his um, Maurizio Merli in it, and so then both of them look really good. So. This is a movie that I had a really crappy copy of. Let me let me pull that real quick. Sorry, uh, I had a really crappy copy of this. Just I don't know if it's public domain or what. I couldn't even watch it. It was just horrible. Uh, but yeah, I'm talking about the movie. I'm talking about is uh, the Fighting Fist of Shanghai Joe. Now this is the uh, crappy uh, DVD of it. I, I don't even think I could watch it. It just looks. It looks pretty bad. So this is the Cauldron uh, Films release of uh, The Fighting Fist of uh, Shanghai Joe. I think it's just called Shanghai Joe. This is a Mario Ciano film. Uh, pretty cool. It's got uh, Klaus Kinski in it. Uh, pretty cool cast. Uh, Robert Hundar, he, he's, he's always good in westerns. And everything but apparently this is from a 2k restoration and it looks good i mean it's the best that it's looked probably ever not perfect but it it looks really good and you know it's an average it's an average type east meets west type of movie you know at that time i think this came out in like God, this did this come out 50 years ago too yeah, sure did. 50 years old, 1973 this came out. So at that time, Kung Fu films were popular. Bruce Lee had just done Enter the Dragon. Um, Euro films, uh, Euro West, spaghetti westerns were very popular too. So, you know, they smashed them together and made this. Um, another one they made was with Lee, Lee Van Cleef and uh, someone, which I think is the better East meets West movie. I mean, actually, if you want to really be picky about it, you could say Red Sun, which had Toshiro Mifune in it, um, Charles Bronson and everybody. You know, that, that, I don't know if that would be East meets West, maybe. But anyway, Shanghai Joe looks good. Um, if, if you're the real collector of Westerns and Spaghetti Westerns, I would say pick it up. Find, find a deal first. Don't, don't pay full price for it. Uh, find a deal. So, Shanghai Joe... Shanghai Joe. Now, this was a real surprise. Now, I had never heard of this movie. I, I never realized that Christopher Walken did a Western. Uh, so, I, I, I don't know how I found this. I just came across it somehow. And it, it just looked weird. It kind of reminded me of... Uh, let's see. What, what's the movie? What's here? Mm-hmm. Sorry guys, I'm trying to find what I what reminds me of it. Where is it at? Where is it at? Kind of reminds me of um, the shooting, um, riding the whirlwind, kind of the Mon kind of Monty a Monty Hellman movie. Let's just put it that way, uh, like the shooting and riding the whirlwind. Um, 
it had a kind of a Monty Hellman feel to it. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I'll talk more about that in the next movie I'm getting ready to show. But anyways, the movie I found was uh, it's called Shoot the Sundown. It's got Christopher Walken in the lead. It's got uh, Margot Kidder, and she's uh, English. She's got an English accent, which she. Um, I think at times she has trouble with it. I think it kind of like like it was on the edge of her breaking character or something with it. Uh, Jeffrey Lewis, who you may remember, he's got that face. You will remember him from the Clint Eastwood movies, Every Which Way But Loose and Any Which Way You Can. Uh, Jeffrey Lewis, he, you know, he's been in a bunch of bunch of movies and stuff. I mean, growing up as a kid, I seemed like I saw him all the time and stuff. But anyways, this is a kind of a different movie. I mean, it's... Um, I'll, I'll, um, I'll read about it. Uh, the same year that Christopher Walken won an Oscar for The Deer Hunter in 1978, that's when this came out, and Margot Kidder was whisked, whisked away by Superman, same year. Um, they start in a uh, eclectic counterculture western, Shoot the, Shoot the Sundown, a stylish uh, meditation on America's history of violence and the tradition of Sergio Leone, um, it observes the uh, what's that? Inter the intersection of a f of a farmer, a former Confederate soldier turned bounty hunter, uh, Christopher Walken, uh, a British uh, maid servant desperate to escape her indentured uh, service uh, servitude uh, to um, I think the who I'm trying to think. yeah she's she's somebody's. Like she's, she's gone out to this town and she's like an indentured service, like a servant. She's like the personal slave. Um, he's he's worked this deal out with her. Another character. I'm trying to think. They don't list his name, but he's kind of gone out there to look for gold and stuff. He's he's took her with her and she's agreed to go and they've worked out some kind of deal. So he can't. She can't leave him. Da da da. Just. Kind of a weird situation. She's trying to get out of it. Um, but um, a vicious mercenary in search of Native American scalps and Monka Zuma's gold. Uh, that's uh, Jeffrey Lewis is that character. Uh, never released on DVD or Blu-ray until now. Shoot the Sundown is a hallucinatory western, long overdue for rediscovery. Which is which is true. I really really enjoyed it. It's one of those. Odd movies. It, it, it kind of says 1978. What was that one movie that Monty Hel Hellman made? Uh, Peck and Paul was in it, and uh, Fabio Testi. What was it? Um, God, what is it? I don't know. I think of it. I'll put it. I'll put it down here. But anyways, they they all kind of fit together somehow. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. It, it's got a Monty Hellman feel to it, anyways. But. Really good. I think you should check it out. Um, just for Christopher Walken alone being in a, in a western. I can't remember him being in any other westerns, uh, but really enjoyable. I, I do enjoy this. We'll watch it again. Uh, next up, um, I had a DVD of this for a long time, and I watched it. It kind of just kind of went over me. I didn't. Maybe it was just the mood at the time, and it sat for for years. And um, I rediscovered it one day put it on and watched it and really liked it and then when I was in the hospital having gallbladder surgery it was on TV and um, they ended up repeating it it was like on a channel like it was like every other movie was that movie so it would, it would come on another movie and then they would come on again so I ended up watching it like two times in one day and just really really just like man this is so freaking good so I wanted to upgrade to Blu-ray. Arrow uh, Academy had a, a Blu-ray, so I wanted to upgrade. So the movie I'm talking about is uh, Peter Peter Fonda directed this, uh, The Hired Hand. Um, I have I have talked about this before on a Western update for the DVD, uh, but this is this is a big upgrade from that DVD. Um, it's you know it's a high definition transfer. It's got a lot of extras on there. That was one of the main things was all this extra stuff on here, because uh, the DVD only has like one little, like an interview or maybe it's talking about restoring it or something. But really good movie, and it's a shame that you know Peter Fonda 
you know, when they talk about Peter Fonda, even as an actor, they bring up Easy Rider. Or if they bring him up as a director, it's Easy Rider and everything. And, it, and it's a shame because this came out in like 1971. This is a couple years after Easy Rider. And I think it just kind of got smushed in those years between some other movies that he made and stuff. Because, you know, he went on to make like, was it Crazy Larry, Dirty Mary or whatever. And movies like that. And then this one was kind of forgotten about. But The Higher Hand is a great movie. I think Leslie uh, on the channel, The Good, The Bad, The Okay, uh, really enjoys this movie too. He gives it a high recommendation. So The Higher Hand, directed by Peter Fonda, and it's got a great performance by Warren Oates, one of my all-time favorite actors, uh, Warren Oates, and um, really good. Um, Berna Bloom as the wife of Peter Fonda is really good also in this. So very, very big recommendation for that. And next up, I got a couple, couple of characters, uh, a pair of characters that are f as famous as American Apple Pie. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but these are two different movies. Both of them have crazy backstories and production problems and just everything. So let's talk about it. So what I'm talking about is uh, The Lone Ranger and Tonto. Um, of course, you know, started out TV, The Lone Ranger, comic books. Kids in the 50s were dressing up as lo The Lone Ranger. Everybody knows, you know, the, the theme and, you know, his horse Silver and all that good stuff. Uh, but in 1981, um, and they, they finally got this movie off the ground. It was in production hell for a long time in the 70s. Uh, it finally came to uh, fruition nutrition, whatever the word I'm trying to say. But what's really cool about this is it's, um, it doesn't say on here, but um, I think it's directed by William Fraker, the, the cinematographer. Um, and it looks great. It looks really good. Uh, so the movie I'm talking about is The Legend of the Lone Ranger. It came out in 1981. Uh, had a lot of problems. Had a lot of problems. Uh, mainly with the actor uh, that played the Lone Ranger. Uh, his name is Clinton Spillsbury. And he was just a prima donna egomaniac. Um, he got the role and he was just... On set, he was just megalomaniac crazy. Um, afterwards, he was doing press and was negative press towards it and everything. So basically... He, he killed his own career. It was like his first movie, and he just basically killed it. I mean, he thought he was going to be a superstar and everything. Now he's forgotten. You know, Clinton Spillsbury, with a K, um, as the Lone Ranger. So, um, but you know, he does he he does a he does a very adequate job in it. But you can tell the movie by time by the time it gets to the end that there was a lot more to this. It, it just feels unfinished. Uh, feels like something's missing out of it. Uh, seems too short, maybe. I mean, it 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 runs. Oh gosh, how how long is this? One hundred minutes. So it's an hour and forty minutes, which is perfect for network TV. You know, so you can fit that in that time slot. But it seems like something's missing from it. It's it's it, it either needed to be completely some scenes reshot definitely re-edited. I don't know if it needed to be longer or just needed to be kind of changed around a little bit, but it could have been a really good movie. I mean, it really looks good. It's well made. I mean, William Fraker, um, expert cinematographer, you know, he's done, what, what did he do? He worked on the French Connection, I believe, and stuff like that. Now, if I'm wrong about that, it doesn't say who's directed, but I'm pretty sure it's Richard Fraker, uh, William Fraker, William Fraker, who did it, but anyways, um, but yeah, it just kind of, it's weird, it's in it, you know, and it's got, it's got Jason Robards in it too, and he, he plays Ulysses S. Grant, and, um, Michael Horse is Tonto, and the, uh, the bad guy is Butch Cavendish, played by Christopher Lloyd, uh, so this was 1981, so, Christopher Lloyd was starting to begin his very successful 1980s career. I mean, he would be in, you know, Back to the Future and Who Famed Roger Rabbit and just, he, you know. But 
all, everybody's, all the actors are adequate. I, I don't know if it's the script or something, just something's missing from it. It, it had a lot of problems. But I do like it. I really do. It was a first time watch, and I really do like it. So it's one of those take a chance on it or, or take it or leave it kind of thing. But I, I really like it. So if you, if you trust my judgment, go for it. And then the last one. This is the big Disney Jerry Bruckheimer version of Dragon by Gore Verbinski. I think I said that right. But this is a 20... When did this come out? 2013? I think it was 2013. Uh, Disney's The Lone Ranger with uh, Johnny Depp as Tonto and Army Hammer as The Lone Ranger. What can I say? The problems on this was phenomenal. I mean, Army Hammer would go on to have all kinds of just bad luck in Hollywood. I mean, he's pretty much washed up. I mean, he's got abuse allegations and just real problem. He comes from a very wealthy family. And um, this was one of these movies that, you know, was going to try to break him and make him this big star. And he never really reached that status. He did a bunch of successful movies around that time, you know, 2011 through 2016 or something like that. But he... But he's got a, I mean, you just Google him, he's got all kinds of problems and stuff and everything. And then you've got Johnny Depp, who, you know, recently had all the problems with, you know, the, you know, going to court and all that, all that, you know, crap that happened last summer. Um, but yeah, I watched some of it. I mean, it's, it's got, um, who's the chick in this? I mean, it's got a Hans Zimmer score. Uh, Johnny Depp was one of the uh, executive producers. Yeah, I mean, it's Gore, and Gore, for, Gore Verbinski. I believe I'm saying his name right. Directed it. Um, it's got the Tim... It's got the Tim... Um, What's her name? I can't think of it. Dang it. She, she's been in a bunch of uh, Tim Burton movies. I think she even dated. I'm sorry. I'm holding this up. Oh, Helen Bonham Carter. So she she's in it. She's kind of like the love interest or something. I kind of watched half of the movie and then I just lost interest in it. I didn't want to go down that route of a Disney movie. And you, you, and you knew around every corner what was going to happen and everything, but I really do like uh, uh, Johnny Depp's makeup in this as Tonto. It's 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 very memorable. I mean, he's got like a dead bird on his head, and it's a, 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 but he looks really good. I think his makeup is pretty good. I mean, some people might say, nah, but um, especially in the beginning, uh, it opens up and he's really old, so he's got this old makeup on as he talks to this little boy, and um, it looks really, really good. So, I mean, that that's that's the main thing of this movie is Johnny Depp's Tonto and everything. So, I mean, you know, yeah, he's playing a Native American, and obviously he's not a Native American, but it, it, was kind of, it was kind of refreshing to see that because it was kind of a throwback to the old movies where, you know, a very white person would play a Native American. You know what I mean? It would be, be like, oh, my God, that's horrible. You know, but sometimes it really worked. I mean, there were some actors that could really pull it off, and, and you got just lost in the character. You know, you weren't thinking the whole time, he's not Native American, he's, he's a white guy. You didn't think that the whole time. You just got in the character. And I, I think that's kind of like with this. I mean, mo most people would look at it like, oh, that's Johnny Depp, you know, and, and stuff. Man, his makeup is good in this, so, but um, don't really recommend the movie. I, I, I would say two stars. I mean, it could have been something big. Um I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty long. It's like two hours and 29 minutes. Um, so, yeah, the the Lone Ranger. And, of course, it was a big box office bomb and controversies with Johnny Depp as a Native American. Um, and, you know, typical stuff. Before cancel culture, you know. Uh, so. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this Western Roundup update. I'm sorry about those long pauses where I didn't say anything, but... Uh, I'm getting older. I'm, I'm getting. I'm gonna be an elder. I'm, I'm pushing fifty. I, I, I give me. Some, 
I got two teenage sons, so that gives me, you know, kind of, you know, I'm losing my memory. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I love doing the Western Roundup videos. I'm really happy that you people love them and watch them. And uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, as always, please comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, until next time, guys, I'm Mike. Got to saddle up the pony and ride off into the sunset. See you guys next time.